Review of House of the Dragon series. The eighth episode, The Last Supper. Episode eight of House of Dragons, The Lord of the Tides, treats us to a somber family dinner as King Viserys, played by Patty Considine, is the final act in the series. Follow me with the House of the Dragon series review. It seems like a tradition that week after week these reviews ensure that we, as viewers, are treated to the best episode of the season. However, this is how the House of the Dragon works, and episode 8 is another example. Maybe because the story gives us more shocking moments as it progresses. But most of all, I think what makes this series so impressive is the creative mind that decides how to tell it. After eight episodes have passed since the beginning of the story and the story of the Dragon family, it must be said, although this series lacks action or physical confrontation, its elegant narrative, its games, the accuracy of the script, and those powerful emotional moments in it may show that this series has been able to the Game of Thrones series should also be surpassed. As a result, Dragon Clan is definitely the best drama airing right now. This may sound like a very exaggerated statement. However, when viewers see what the writers and the rest of the filmmakers, actors, and every other part of the show have in store for the show each week, it's hard to deny that it's good. House of the Dragon has not only saved the Game of Thrones franchise, but also brought a significant stream of new viewers to the universe, and has become an example of what a successful weekly TV show should be. The eighth episode of the first season of Dragon Family is called Lord of the Tides. The title is a reference to Corlys Velaryon, the current holder of the title, and also to Lucerys Velaryon, Princess Rhaenyra's second son, who became heir apparent to the title after Corlys. These two characters are very important to what happens in this episode, and yet, when the bigger characters enter the episode's political rivalry, they become completely irrelevant. Because this episode is an extensive episode in terms of narrative with a lot of drama and emotions. Of course, this all works thanks to the excellent work of the show's scriptwriting team. The writers have been able to charge the dialogues with as much meaning and weight as they can. Because of this, every conversation that happens during this episode feels as important as it can be. There are some lines of dialogue in this episode that are downright painful and they really stand out as the final words of some of the characters in this fictional universe of the show. The writers have made a lot of effort to create and shape these characters to perfection, and the result is amazing. There have been criticisms that the show's time jumps don't allow for character development, but I believe the show has proven quite the opposite. By focusing only on the most important moments of these people's lives, this series avoids creating scenes that could be just a filler moment. And that's something that happened a lot in Game of Thrones. In House of the Dragon, every scene is meaningful and every character is only revealed when they make a decision to build their character or advance the story. As a result, the time jumps only made character development more difficult. With the eighth episode of House of Dragons, we are faced with a very emotional moment in the series, which is accompanied by a lot of darkness and a very shocking rawness. Everything is focused on a character who has been the center of conflict throughout the season and a sort of hourglass or ticking time bomb. Plus, he's one of the saddest kings we've ever seen in a screen adaptation of George R. R. Martin's stories. Yes, I mean King Viserys, played by Patty Considine, the screenplay written by Eileen Shim for this episode and for King Viserys himself, treats this character with the devotion and sadness worthy of Shakespeare's works. Episode after episode, we've seen King Viserys, brilliantly played by Paddy Considine as a certain man, torn apart limb by limb and piece by piece. There are several things that consume his body and mind like termites. His body is decomposing from badly treated permanent wounds from the iron bed, and his mind is broken from the burden of leading a kingdom. But most importantly, this sadness of seeing his children who are cracked and on the verge of extinction has led him to the abyss of destruction. Everyone around him is involved in power issues and interested in it. But King Visery simply wants them to love each other, and these are the people he loves. House of the Dragon Episode 8 is all about him, as it also means his big goodbye. 
The last thing this character does in life determines the future of his house and family forever. And Viserys almost succeeds in saving his family from disaster, if only for a short time. But the conflict in the end will be imminent. But overall, the eighth episode is the episode that you finally had the taste to see something like. But why? Because apart from the story and characters that are at their peak, the direction is also beautiful and powerful and every scene is executed in the best possible way. The clothing design is also at its peak. This is definitely going to be an important part of the episodes and as the series progresses, the significance of the colors and clothes the characters wear is definitely something to look out for. The cinematography is also pretty amazing, with some shots that really stick with the audience long after the episode is over. However, what really sets this episode apart is the gameplay. Every single actor here just does an amazing job. A lot of names come to mind in this part, but one of the real standouts in the episode is Evan Mitchell as a Moon Targaryen. The actor makes his debut as the adult version of this character, and it is clear that he will become a fan favorite with this game model. But the main reason to watch this episode is Paddy Considine's performance as King Viserys. The characters have undergone incredible changes throughout the series. However, here in this episode, Paddy Considine himself gives a different and commendable performance that is unlike anything we've seen on TV or in film this year. Considine is likely to receive many awards for this episode, and he deserves every one of them. At the end of the episode, you can't watch the credits roll and not analyze the gigantic acting job that Considine pulled off before your eyes. It's shocking to see the King of the Seven Realms as a corpse still breathing, barely able to organize his thoughts and look up. However, he makes a last-ditch effort to try to make things right and above all to defend his daughter from the attacks that seek to mess up his succession. The moment he appears in the throne room to slowly and effortlessly take his place on the throne is very moving. Considine's performance and Rami Javadi's music are among the most important elements of this sequence. On the other hand, it is the staging of certain moments that make this episode so valuable. Gita Vasant Patel's direction is quite effective. For many, the fact that there is no action or physical conflict in the episode makes it less enjoyable overall. But the House of the Dragon is quite the opposite. From the beginning, the series is about the conversations behind closed doors, the political framework, the scheming strategies, and the emotional aspects that are revealed here more than ever. At the end of the episode, there will be a private family dinner. There, Viserys speech takes center stage as it signifies his last great effort to heal the scrapes and wounds. The king's personal effort is effective because the two important pillars of this drama come to their senses and look at each other for a moment with forgiveness and the desire to cooperate. The grief of a lost friendship, like that of Rhaenyra and Alicent, suddenly becomes heavier, and both even seem to spend moments exchanging respect for each other. However, we are in the world of Game of Thrones and hope is fading fast. The inclusion of the Song of Ice and Fire prophecy was initially something like a sign that had to link this series with its previous version. But in this part, it finds a place and an even deeper meaning. The promises of a divine being, the promises of one who must be chosen and placed above all others, are now the catalyst for power that can destroy everything in this interred dynasty battle. But the final scene of this episode is very powerful. Not only because of the way Director G. the Vasant Patel chooses to frame it, but also because it definitely marks the beginning of a dance of dragons. We are going into big budget action and war scenes. However, so far the road in the storytelling has been more than satisfactory. It showed that television also has its ways of attracting millions of viewers, sometimes even better ways to cope with the quality seen in movies. one of the best dramas of the year and the best drama currently on the air. A network like HBO has always been proud of its television productions. They make an event out of every episode release and here you can see why they are so popular. Many other networks and streaming services wish they could do something like this, but it takes a lot of talent and experience to do it. 
and an example of that is the eighth episode of the House of the Dragon series.